through love, peace, purity, power, bliss. So this is our identity. My feeling is that this is a much bigger gathering than we have had, so this is wonderful, and that it is a very loving gathering, so this is special. We are going to go together into silence uh, for the purpose of touching something very deep within and bringing it to the surface. And in the depth of the soul there is great light and deep darkness. And part of the practice of silence is to um, work very well with the great light and deep dark uh, to be in equilibrium between the light and the shadow to be easy with angels and monsters and to learn uh, more about thought, what it is, how it can be are used to create something uh, more quickly and more effectively than you can do using just normal physical power. Yoga is very much about um, uh, coming in contact with this kind of uh, power of thought and we want to bring everything from the depths of our being to the surface in order to arrive at equilibrium so that an equanimity so that we can um, we can operate using just pure thought and um, I will also be in that deep silence with you we will have time together, I will talk. But um, even if one is talking about these things, it is a kind of silence, because real silence is when your thoughts are coherent and meaningful and pure and um, very positive, not in the sense that you make it up, positive, invented, that's not strong enough. But there are certain kinds of insights that you get about things that normally you would consider negative or um, challenging. And you get to the essence of it um, and find the, the deeper meaning in it. Um, what I've been experiencing lately is that I think we have certain assumptions about people, institutions, um, concepts, and that we think that, yeah, this is positive, it has to be positive, it's supposed to be positive, and therefore it must be positive, and yet you find that it is actually negative. And then you shift your mind in relation to it and see that though it may be negative, but if you don't know what it is, it's much more negative than if you know what it is. Am I making myself clear? Oh, good. And this makes us free somehow. So I've been experiencing this uh, recently. 
and um, thinking about the usefulness of knowingness. So what is positive is more to do with what is true than what is pleasant. And sometimes people have thought that if it's pleasant then it's better, but I think no. If it's real, if it's true, that has more power of positivity than if it's pleasant. We need to move away from our conventional morality by which we evaluate if something's good or bad in terms of it's painful or it's pleasant. To something else which is more, um, if it's not true, it's very damaging. And if it's true, it may not be pleasant, but it's healing, it brings um, relations close, and it carries us forward, I think, to what this time of great change and great turbulence is all about. And so we will explore some of these things. And um, I think what's most freeing within is to be very clear about what's true, what's real for each one of us, and not be concerned about if it's pleasant. Um, in the Bhagavad Gita, it defines yoga as a state of equanimity and independence from the pairs of opposites. And it gives much more emphasis to what's true and knowing the difference between what's true and what's not true, what's real and what's not real. So when you are um, able to capture what's true and what's real, then you can position yourself in regard to it and it puts you in a place of power. And from there you become more commanding in how you use thought and then you can create the atmosphere in which what is the most appropriate for the time, for the circumstances can take place and which is nothing to do with pleasant, pleasurable, unpleasant, painful. Does that make sense to you? Because for us to be free from pain, pleasure, this type of pairs of opposites is very empowering. Because then we're not operating on the basis of um, sense perception. Sense perception is all to do with attraction and repulsion. But knowing is more to do with what's real, what's false, what's real uh, has power, what's false tends to um, damage and um, uh, dis cause disconnectedness, fragmentation. And uh, when something is integrated, it has power and if you're in power and you move forward with clarity then whatever really needs to happen will happen. You become the agent of positive change in relations, in yourself, in um, how things, how circumstances occur and this we will work with that. Is that good for you? So, I like to just express my great happiness to be with all of you after many months and uh, it's very uh, grateful to Jacqueline for organizing all this 
as she always does so beautifully. So we're going to go into meditation for about a half an hour. And so those of you who are new, I will just explain a little bit about this practice of Raj Yoga that um, we do. And it is, first of all, to go deep inside the self, knowing that the self is a being of light. Because the sense of self in the center of the forehead. And you can rest your eyes in the central point in the picture next to me, if you like, keeping the eyes open actually enables the mind to be more focused than if you have closed eyes. So you can try this. And as you turn within, position yourself behind the face as a non-material being of light. You're very subtle, quiet, still. You begin to feel the atmosphere of the room changes as we do this. You are more in contact with the self at a deeper level. The self who is eternal and immortal. The inextinguishable light of being. for perceiving the material world. And the inner being, the self, the soul, has the eye to perceive what cannot be experienced through the body. We come from a world of light. Beyond the world of matter. And eventually we return to that light. as a seed that spark of life that animates this body is the self the pure the intelligent and now we focus on the divine source beyond the higher power the light of wisdom the source ok 
connect and thought. which light and energy fills the soul. And let yourself go deep, quiet, gently. You begin to let go of the physical. To feel yourself as pure consciousness. Yoga is very subtle, requires patience to be still without tension, focused within and beyond. Make the connection Feel that energy flowing from beyond into your being and let it radiate into the atmosphere far into the distance. You are a conduit. to bring that energy into the world.
There may be many distractions, but again and again, return to the point of light within. No need to force anything. Just bring yourself to the focused point. And let it become stable. Allow yourself to be detached from the body. Even while being connected with the body. It is a return to your original condition. The stillness of life the energy of being the energy of your mind focused on itself and then connect beyond to the source of light. Then gently allow yourself to return back and reconnect with the body gently. Feel that difference between the self and the body where you can be connected or you can be detached easily. And feel the energy of that connection rejuvenating your body filling each cell with light and energy Sure.